I get fired, then I only have a short amount of time. I can stay in the country before I'm like deported. Hi guys, it's Katie and Kim. My sister, she's four and a half years older and we both studied abroad in the States and London. But we're both from the Philippines. You guys will already know this video is the third one in this series where we talk about our experience as an international student. And today is really exciting because we are gonna talk about our lowest <laughs> moments. And we're gonna go off the topics that you sent me on Instagram at AlohaKDX, which will include loneliness, homesickness, immigration. Before you watch this, make sure you check out the first two where we first talk about whether studying abroad was worth it and the culture shock we experienced. But if you did that, great. We're gonna start now. First question, how do you deal with loneliness, especially in new cities? I'll tell you how I think you should deal with loneliness versus what I actually did. So what I actually did is busy myself to the point of having zero time to think about loneliness. I felt this especially my sophomore year when I was taking the most credits, most extracurriculars and leadership positions. I was running this YouTube channel full time. I was running everywhere. I didn't really feel lonely for the most part because I had too much to think about to even feel lonely. But these small moments where I had time to think were really deep moments of loneliness and realizing I could not sit still with myself. I think three things helped me with loneliness. The first thing was actually having the time to sit down and reflect on what I was feeling and to be completely honest with myself. I think that's the hardest part because it takes a lot to be able to sit down and be like, something is wrong, you have to face it because there's no way out except inwards. The second was finding a community of people to share this with and have conversations with and also realize that you're not alone. Third, which is kind of an extension of the community, but I really turned to my faith. Faith gave me a way to look at my loneliness and what really was fueling it. Because oftentimes there's a reason for the loneliness. Like for me, it was like a fear of not feeling like I had a purpose. And so that's why I kept working and making myself feel like I was needed in places, like I was growing and achieving things. Faith really helped me confront that because at least in the Christian faith, a lot of it is like, you you don't have to work to earn your love with God. It's a free gift that's given. Ever since I was like, I'm never alone. God is always with me. I don't think there were many moments where I was like, oh, I'm so lonely. I think there were maybe just moments of quiet where I felt that I was alone and then I think I just like sort of sit and zone out, think about mortality or just like human existence. I think whenever I felt that I was lacking some kind of connection, I would try to schedule something with my friends. Like I'd hit them up and be like, hey, do you wanna grab brunch this weekend? Or do you wanna go check out this museum? I'd also schedule things for myself, whether that was like calls with my family or like take myself out on a date. I would say the year that I felt the loneliest was maybe senior year because um, I was trying to decide whether or not I should go back home after college and I was leaning towards coming back home and I was the only international student that I knew who was making that decision. Loneliness comes and goes in waves. You kind of have to like put yourself out there to find connection or to find people that you can connect with. If the issue is that you can't find people you relate to, then kind of being by yourself isn't going to help you find that community. You have to go out and try different things and reach out to others. Okay, second question. How did you deal with homesickness while studying abroad? I was not homesick when I left. <laughs> I was sick of home, so I really wanted to sort of just leave. I was out and about doing things, immersing myself in the community. It actually wasn't until maybe junior or senior year that I started feeling homesick. And I think that was because I had felt kind of detached from my home because I had spent so much time living in different cities there was a huge gap between who I had become when I had studied abroad and then who I might be when I return home and that was really difficult for me to deal with. I think the best way to deal with homesickness, at least for me, is food is a great way. So I went out to local like Asian supermarkets and I would buy mackerel or bangus, which is like fried milkfish, which is common in Filipino culture. I hang out with my Filipino friends, go out to get Filipino brunch, food that I would eat a lot when I was younger. And then I would also listen to like throwback music, Westlife or like Backstreet Boys, or my dad listened to a lot of J-pop 
growing up, sometimes country music. I think homesickness for me hit a bit earlier. It wasn't really like I was crying and I wish I was back home because I think coming to the States, I had been preparing already. You know, months before I was like, I am going to the States and I was kind of mentally already preparing for it. So when I got there, I was really excited to be there and I knew that this was going to be a four year thing. It wasn't going to be forever. And so I really wanted to make the most of it. Putting that into perspective helped me with homesickness because I could appreciate what I had now, knowing that it wasn't forever. But also I got to look forward to going back home. That said, first year, I remember eating a lot of dried mangoes. Also a lot of seaweed. Seaweed is low key like, <laughs> One of my favorite snacks that I also ate a lot. I would call my friends in high school. So we either video call or we would also just text like every day. And instead of feeling like, oh, I wish they were here with me or I wish we were back home, you know, together. It was more like, hey, I'm on this new adventure. This is what's going in my life. Come with me on it vicariously through our texts. And I also get to see what their lives are like. Oh, and I joined the Filipino Cultural Club at my university. So it was called CFA or Cornell Filipino Association. I was pretty involved my first year. I had a fam, my big, or she was literally like my ate. She was Filipino and she was also an international student who really took me under her wing and made me feel so at home. Shout out to Micah. Okay, next question. What was the hardest thing you had to face as an international student? I think probably when I was graduating and my American friends were, you know, applying to jobs left and right and they didn't really have any visa constraints. For me, when I was looking at jobs, I had to make sure and like read the fine print that the company was open to hiring international students or would sponsor them. Because I also realized that I can be kicked out of the country anytime. And even now when I talk to some friends who are international students who are working in the US, they're like, oh, I always have to have a job or if I you know, want to transition to another job or if I get fired, then I only have a short amount of time. I can stay in the country before I'm like deported. For a lot of my friends, there was also the H-1B visa lottery, which is like, you're not guaranteed a visa. You have to get a company to sponsor you and then you have to apply to a lottery or you can get that visa. And that's kind of up to chance. I think that lack of certainty was probably the most difficult thing that I had to face. I think for me throughout it was a lot of self-doubt because of a similar reason where a lot of my friends who I hung out with were American citizens. I'd be like, oh yeah, work, like let me do that job. And I was like, oh wait, can you even work in the state legally? Or does this job even relate to your major? It feels like I'm left behind because all of my friends like don't have to worry about these things and they can continue on but I'm like wait oh my gosh I need to start thinking about when I'm applying for my employment authorization if I want to work in the states and my job is contingent on that because if I get a job but I don't get my EAD then I can't work there and I'm like I gotta go just even thinking about the timing of things it's like can I travel no I can't travel unless I get my EAD when am I gonna get my EAD I don't know it's a lot of uncertainty a lot of things were outside of my control next question was college the lowest point of your life I feel like you've only lived until <laughs> college. It could have been not in college. Yeah, honestly, I don't think college is my lowest point. It did have a lot of low points, but I think my lowest point was always middle school. I think my lowest points, they weren't in college per se. I have two really low points. The first was my junior year summer where I was actually living in New York and working at a media company. It was difficult for me because I thought it was, you know, my dream job, like dream city, dream company. And for whatever reason, I just felt very isolated and confused about adulthood because I was going into work, um, I had a nine to five. It was a very big company and I just didn't like the work that much. The people were nice, but I felt a little bit removed from them. I lived in like this apartment in New York city and I lived alone. The combination of all those things like I thought would have made me really happy but instead it kind of made me depressed. It was really difficult to grapple with because it was something that I really wanted for a really long time and I couldn't see my future after that point. I was like oh my gosh everything that I wanted is not actually what I want. And I eventually figured out that that line of work wasn't for me, the pace of life wasn't for me. I don't like living alone, I like living with other people even though I like having my alone time. Then the second lowest point was actually right after college or a couple of months after college um, when I came back home to the Philippines because I didn't really know that many people here. I felt also isolated from my community and from my family because I felt like they didn't really know me anymore because I had changed and evolved 
into a different person and I had difficulty expressing who I was to my family because I felt like they wouldn't approve. None of my siblings besides my youngest brother was living at home in the Philippines. Like my sister had just left for college and so being the only sort of adult child back was such a difficult transition. I just felt like a fish out of water. Like even though I was born and raised in Manila, I felt like an outsider. I didn't know what I wanted to do either with my life so that didn't help. There were a couple of days where I was just Actually, not a couple of days. <laughs> there were definitely a couple of months where I would just wake up in bed and ask myself, like, what am I doing here? Why am I still here? And those were really difficult times. Like, I'm getting kind of emotional talking about it. Definitely went to therapy. Something that my therapist did say was, like, I'm not the only person seeking her for this kind of, like, help with transitioning back to your home country. And learning that I wasn't the only person going through what I was going through made me realize that, oh, this is actually bigger than me. This is something that many people go through. It made me feel less alone. Okay, but last question. How hard is it to start a new life to a different culture and everything? I think it depends on where you're going. The US was not that different, at least for me, from the international school that I went to. I think London, going to London was a little bit more different because they have a British accent. That's actually not the biggest reason. Teaching style in the UK was a little bit more different for me because there were literally only two or three assessments throughout the whole year and a lot of your grade was dependent on this one file final and this like midterm. In the US I had like quizzes, tests, some classes had like participation grade, you got assessed on midterms, sometimes projects. But in the UK there were very few assessments and they were weighted very heavily. So that was something that was difficult to adjust to. I think it definitely depends on the specific culture that you're going to and how different it is from your own. One example is like when I went to the US there was a Filipino club. You know I would think that that was a place where I would find a sense of home but a lot of the students there were Filipino-American and I felt like there was a difference being an international person from the Philippines and hanging out with Filipino-Americans. Like there was quite a bit of difference there. So it actually made me feel more different than I thought I would. So it really depends. I think how I would summarize it is you can try your best to build a life in America or wherever you're going, but be ready at any time to sacrifice all of it. I say this because I have a lot of international student friends are really trying to make Make a life in the States as in they want to work there they want to get their visas they want to get their green card and then eventually become a citizen and that is a really long journey that a lot of people hope for but aren't able to have when you go to the States for university for four years you are usually on an F1 visa that's the visa you get but if you want to work in the States you have to change your visa to an H1B but not everybody gets granted the H-1B. In fact, I think they only accept like a third of people because it's a lottery system. And most people get the boot because they will not get the H-1B work visa and so they will have to return to their home. I know friends who are willing to, instead of take the H-1B visa route, take the green card route. And the green card route is you can obtain like rights to re-enter the States and eventually get citizenship if you have permanent residency. There are a lot of sacrifices you have to make. Like you cannot leave the States, you cannot leave where your current residence is. You can't even change your job because your job sponsors you for the green card. So that is a sacrifice that a lot of people make if they want to immigrate to the States long term. And the other thing is if you go to a university where you don't have any support system, you know, like in my case, I went to upstate New York where I had no family, no friends. During emergency situations, you may not have anyone to go to. Thankfully, I didn't have any super urgent situations my first year, which is also when I was actively trying to make like close friends so I could find people I could lean on. But sophomore year, when the COVID situation happened, everything I had to do on my own. My American friends would have their parents drive up to Ithaca and help them move out, help them do everything, just like be a calming parent, like reassuring them that like everything was going to be okay. <laughs> we were scared that the airports were gonna close because the airports did close in other countries when the pandemic was happening. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's like evacuation full on. And I was alone. I didn't have anyone I could go to to help me during this time. I never in my life expected that I, I would have a situation where I just immediately pack up my love and like go. I'm sure there are other variations that international students face. Maybe, you know, there's like a medical issue or you get into an accident. Who are you going to turn to? That's another hard part. Well, what a nice way to end this video yeah. on such a positive note. Hard parts about studying abroad. Yeah. Hopefully this gave you perspective. Yeah. <laughs>
If you want us to talk about other topics, then message me on Instagram or I will probably do another story Q&A where I ask for questions. So make sure you're following me at AlohaKDX if you want to join those. But otherwise, subscribe. There will be a new video next Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time where we talk about life after college versus college life. Thank you all for watching and bye! Thank you, bye! Mm.